that's all we can do is you just do the best with the time you have. Good afternoon, beautiful people. I'm getting a late start today. Late start to filming. If I don't watch out, I'm gonna be so busy, I'm not even gonna get around to filming this week. I had a pretty busy day yesterday. My friend Billy of Permafastures Farm, he came out. I ended up making a video with him. Um, that'll probably be out around the time this video is, I think. All right, so, last you saw, we had a pig farrowing. It was kind of funny. I walked out, I just had a feeling I'd seen her laying in one spot and I figured she was probably gonna have babies and I walked out just to check her and I brought the camera with me. She was literally having them right when I walked up. She popped out the first one right when I walked up and while I stood there, she had two more. All said and done, she ended up having six. I think it was Sunday, we had a whole bunch of rain. And it's cold, it's been cold. We call this what we have been having all this warm weather, false spring, because it feels really nice, everything starts blooming, and then cold weather comes back. Feels like we're back to winter. I was joking around with Meg, I was like, yeah, your, uh, your trial period of spring has expired. Please sign up if you wish to continue. That's basically what just happened. We're back to cold weather for a minute. All right, got piggies everywhere now. Got piggies over there, got some more in here. They're all healthy. Now I will say, we did lose one. I think it was off the fresh batch. Um, they moved in here when the rain started and uh, I came out, I think that was Sunday morning, first thing, and there was one that had gotten smashed. Um, it looked like it was up against the wall where it couldn't get away. And I mean, having a dozen, a baker's dozen of piglets in here with, you know, three full-size pigs, I imagine it was pretty crowded. Everybody trying to stay out of the, uh, stay out of the rain. It sucks, but it happens. But everybody else is doing great. Now that this mama has brought her group over to the first one, they all nurse everybody. I, I don't even think the mamas know which babies are theirs anymore. I do notice that the, the other batch, if you look at them hard enough, you can tell which batch is which. Um, they're only a week apart in age, but the first batch is just ever so slightly bigger than the uh, second batch. So everybody's doing good. Babies are nice and healthy. All right, so there's the update on all the piglets. Counting everybody, the, the boys had asked, they're like, hey, dad, how many pigs do we have on the property right now? Ooh, yeah, we have about 22 pigs here right now. That's a lot of piglets, a lot of pigs. We've got the three adults, with their dozen piglets. We've got the ones that are over here in the pig pens. Uh, I think we've currently got, what is it, one, two, three there, seven. Yeah, we've got seven all together here. One of those is sold, six of those for us. Um, those will be our feeder pigs. Hopefully this winter, if, uh, if they get big enough, but usually guinea hogs are like a two year grow out, 18 months to 24 months, something like that is when they're big enough to harvest. We may end up having to get a couple feeder pigs, something that'll be ready this winter, but it's kind of cool. It is just nap time for everybody. Everybody's out in the sun, laying down. It's a good thing to do on a day like today. Even though it's like nice and sunny, it looks like a beautiful day and then you come outside and it's like, it's really cold. Like the, the wind, I think that's what's hard, is the breeze is so cold, you just like start shivering if you're not moving. It's supposed to get down into the 20s tonight, which I am not looking forward to. There's quite a lot of plants that I will either lose, like I'm, I'm fairly certain all of our peach trees that decided to flower with all of that nice weather, pretty sure all of those peach trees are going to lose all of their blossoms. It's happened every year we've been here. All right, so on to other things. I, weather aside, actually get to come out here and I get to do some some garden work. We, uh, we were able to find some seed potatoes and we are going to get a bed ready. Let me walk over here. Man, I'm gonna have to get out here and weed some garlic here in the next, hopefully soon. All right, so this is where we grew our squash last year. This year, this is gonna get put into potatoes and then I'm sure after the potatoes are done, we might do like green beans or something like that. That was what we did last year in a bed down there. I think that'd be really cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up this weed barrier. I don't know if I'm going to use it. it I've, never, I've never grown potatoes under a weed barrier. 
I want to say there's reasons you don't do that. Anyway, so I'm going to pull up this weed barrier and I'm going to get the tiller over here, fluff this all up. I may change the beds. I may uh, change how this is going, uh, do a couple more rows. But something that would be cool is if I pull these up, if this dirt is still fluffy enough, I could actually plant all the potatoes in the bottom of the row. Then as they grow, take dirt from the top of the, uh, the beds and mound my potatoes with it. And that was kind of what I was thinking, but I mean, that's only three, three furrows. That's, I have a bunch of potatoes to plant. So this dirt is so incredibly fluffy and soft and moist. Last, uh, when was that? It was like late spring when we got this bed ready. Oh, I, don't, I don't even remember now. I'd have to go back and look at our videos when we uh, put in this bed. Uh, I just about got beat half to death by the rototiller hitting rocks. Well, all the rocks are now moved. We've been able to use them for other things. I've put them in piles alongside the beds. I've picked up various piles. I've used them in walkways. Uh, and then like the really, really big rocks. I've actually put them in the ditch on the driveway where the water gets going so fast that it carves a canyon. There's a few rocks that were probably around the 30 pound size. Uh, you know, bigger than this fuel tank right there, just for size. Uh, good sized rocks that came out of this bed and I put them in the driveway and when we have those big rain events all of those big rocks wound up down at the very bottom. Apparently I need something bigger than 30 pound rocks to slow down that water. Alright so I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm just going to rotor tilt. This is not going to take as long as I was thinking which actually works out. Uh, right behind me all of where we grew beans last year we're not going to grow climbing beans this year. We are gonna grow strictly bush beans. Last year, we had better luck with the bush beans and the varieties of climbing beans we grew, we didn't really like to eat. They were okay, but we really liked the uh, bush beans that we grew. So we're gonna grow exclusively bush beans this year. We're gonna try it out. So all of these trellises will come out and I'm going to reorient these beds to where they're going that way uh, because part of the problem is having the beds go this way in the bottom of this uh, swale is it blocks the water and we get a huge lake that way whenever we have rain. Wasn't really thinking about that one when I put these beds in it's like yeah I'm gonna set them up north-south that way you know sunlight's better if they're going east-west then the north side gets shaded out. Yeah no it didn't matter. For today, today if I can get this rototilled and prepped for potatoes I can do potatoes possibly tomorrow. Tonight is a karate night and it's already like three o'clock in the afternoon so <laughs> I'm just gonna do what I can do today. That's all we can do is you just do the best with the time you have. Got all my amendments down, and since I know somebody's gonna ask, this is what we've been getting, uh, but this place has gone out of business since the last time we ordered. And it's it's not a crazy fertilizer, 341's pretty low. There's a lot of the, uh, the micronutrients in there, things that you won't get from your generic fertilizer. Um, this stuff has really made the difference for us. I, I can add nitrogen fairly easy, phosphorus, you can find that. But adding this stuff with all the micronutrients, man, it makes a huge difference. Kind of bummed we found out, like last week, that uh, they've gone out of business. So we'll have to find a new place to get all this stuff. We could find places to buy the individual ingredients, you know, bone meal, blood meal, kelp, all that stuff. Um, but it was, it was convenient being able to buy it all uh, ready to go. So, all right, I'm gonna get all that tilled back in and this bed is ready. wind is getting colder and colder. All tilled in, all the amendments are in. I'm actually gonna wait to rake this till probably tomorrow. It's just still too sticky and it's not muddy, it's just, it's almost muddy. It just needs to dry out a little bit. So I'll just leave this tonight 
and tomorrow if I get a chance to get out here to rake and build my furrows I'll do that I'm gonna get all this weed weed barrier in a spot with something on it I got some pallets over here I can set on this weed fabric so it doesn't blow away tonight but I'm ready to get inside out of the wind this wind is just it's hard to work in the wind after a while it's almost like you feel chapped from being out in the wind that's what it's that's what it's like it's just oh, it's cold my lips are my lips are getting drier and drier all right we ran over here and like instantly whipped up some leftover mashed potatoes from yesterday in a dish i was like hey what are you doing she's like i'm making dinner it's like in like five seconds that's fast leftover mashed potatoes I have like no room in my fridge to put any more food because we just have like leftovers upon leftovers right now. So I'm using the leftovers. Yesterday was the twins' birthday. They couldn't agree on a single meal. So poor Meg here cooked like... <laughs> it was a lot. It was actually like the most disjointed meal I think we've ever had. It I was like it was... Uh, shrimp and pasta, yeah. but then there was chicken and pasta, and there was broccoli, broccoli and artichoke, artichokes, and mashed potatoes and gravy. It was just like... And garlic bread. Yeah, and garlic bread. I mean, some of the things went together and some did not. Yeah. But right. it was fine. It was, it was interesting. Wanted. I mean, it was all good, but... So, I see some canned meat has come out. Yes. So. That is such an amazingly fast way to it's just pull a dinner out of your so hat. Good. I love it. So, um, just mashed potatoes and this beef, and I'll put gravy on top of it, and we'll have, like, shepherd's pie, sort of. It's like upside down, upside down shepherd's pie. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with beef and potatoes. No, you really can't. So this is the stuff you canned last week? Mm-hmm. Was that last week? week I think it was last week. Whatever. I don't know. It. Recently? Recently. For some reason, the past couple weeks have just been such a blur. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't even know what day it is half the time. No. I really love canned stew beef. I don't know why. Like, it's... even as a kid, I loved it. Like, we would get store-bought cans, and mom would open it and, you know, have it sitting there ready to go into whatever dish, and I would eat, like, half a can. <laughs> That's how I used to be with tuna. I'm not actually a huge tuna fan, but when I was younger and my mom would be, you know, making up some tuna for tuna sandwiches, I would sit there, and, you know, it was flaky, and so you could pull out flakes of tuna, and I'd eat it right out of the can. I loved it. I actually preferred it out of the can to like in on the a salad, sandwich yeah. yeah a tuna salad i probably shouldn't say this but you know what the canned beef has always reminded me of what dog food <laughs> it looks like canned dog food <laughs> it actually kind of smells like canned dog food <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's just that canned meat oh smell but i mean oh. that looks like canned dog food like i hate to say it it's gonna be considerably better than canned dog uh, food i would hope so yes i better stop while I'm ahead, I don't want to wind up in the doghouse. Uh, you could say I'm, I'm just, I just keep digging. That's what's gonna get you kicked out of this house. It's really, fun. like criticizing <laughs> the meat. No, that's fine, but making dog puns. Terrible puns. Huh. Come on. What? Throw me a bone. No. That gravy is cold. It is, but it was made with like super gelatinous pork stock. And you can never have too much gravy mm -mm. and this is really good gravy too because i made it with pork roast drippings yeah it's very rich gravy it was really good last night all right so you just made dinner in like four minutes canned meat is like it is the best it's a game changer honestly <laughs> all right Come on, lobster. <laughs> you know what? What? I think it needed more gravy. Oh, yeah. Well. Maybe some cheese on top. That I know. Might, that does kind of look like It looks like it needs cheese on top. That's right. I bet you that's really, really tasty. I'm thinking it will be. All right. Cool. <laughs> he says, ooh. That was a, uh, a quick, <laughs> yeah. quick dinner. Super easy. Cool. I think everybody will eat themselves silly on I it, too. They will. All right. Let's eat. I think that's gonna do it for us for today. This time change has got everybody all messed it up. It is, yeah. It's, here it is Wednesday, and I still haven't adjusted the time change. 
or Tuesday. <laughs> See? See, I'm so messed up. I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> no, I didn't color my hair red. No, it's not blue. I showed her. Oh, the old a, picture. A picture, way back. Years ago now. When that one was a baby. When that one was a baby. Uh, Meg dyed her hair like the color red, like his shirt. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. I loved it. It was so, yeah. so much fun. It was like it was bright red. Munchie was a baby. Yes, yes. Munchie was a baby. We we I took Buggy down a down memory lane. Yeah. Going through pictures on my phone. I, I have pictures from way way back. Way back. Yeah. And she was just like, "Is that baby me?" I was like, "No, that baby is your brother, who's now 11." Yep. Time flies. Yes, it does. That's going to do it for us for today, so we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.